Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Paul in Northern California. It's 3-21-2014. day. Uh, and this is James 3. Let me let us pray together in unity as one to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who's coming again. Amen. Let's get excited today. Heavenly Father, I come boldly to your throne of grace to put a prayer petition at the feet of Jesus Christ, my high priest, my intercessor, my king, the Lord of lords, who was and is and is to come. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would give us a boldness today, strength today. Change our hearts, O Lord. Open our eyes and ears to receive blessings from you and take that blessing to others so that we may be blessed to be a blessing and do your will. Father God, let us know what your will is and put it in our hearts and we will go forward in you by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. In other words, if you can control the tongue, you can control the whole body. Let me put it to you another way. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, don't be too eager to tell others their faults, for we all make many mistakes. And when we, te when we teachers of scripture who should know better do wrong, our punishment will be greater than it would be for others. And everybody say, ouch, <laughs> for real. If anyone can control his tongue, it proves that he has perfect control over himself in every other way. Praise you, Jesus. Three, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. And, you know, when... When, when I grew up as a child, uh, here's another. <laughs> when I was a child, <laughs> I don't know why it seems so funny. Like, I just pulled on these real life stories, you know. <laughs> okay, let's stay focused. Jesus, we love you, Lord. <laughs> Stop laughing. All right, now. I needed that. Thank you, Jesus. I did. I need that. Everybody just laugh. Dolly laugh, man. It's merry medicine. Okay. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> Go laugh for about five minutes. Peace out. No. For <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let, me <drink. laughs> Let me drink some tea. Well, I needed that today. Okay, where are we? Verse 3. When I was a child, <laughs> uh, living in Vacaville, which is in, uh, it means Cowtown. Uh, it's just west of here. <laughs> okay, I probably just lost about 80% of everybody. I mean, it's the boss gone mad. Come on now, this is joy. I, if you only know how, how little I laugh, I need, need to laugh more. We had this horse named Trigger. I'm just going to push through this. It was my sister's horse. And she used to have me go uh, feed it for her. She'd give me like a dollar or something. This horse was crazy. I mean, Jay Trigger was crazy. It was a Palomino. I know why she didn't want to feed that. I was kind of young and dumb then, but now I know there's a reason why she didn't want to go and feed that. So it was in this stable, and you had to climb under, uh, you know, the fence, the wooden fence, three three post fence, and go in there and give them alfalfa and hay. And this horse hated people. It was a mean horse. It wasn't a nice horse. It would. <laughs> It would run and chase you with its teeth out, like, like I'm gonna get you. And I'd have to put the food down and run as fast as I could. Well, anyway, that's probably really funny to me. I thought that horse was gonna kill me. When I got home, I'd be mad at my sister, man. Can I get an amen? Well, you got me feeding this crazy horse, and why is it only a dollar? You getting over on me? <laughs> anyway, I mean, it literally did bite off her finger one day. 
So one day she was riding Trigger and I was riding this other horse. And uh, anyway, that's a long story. But if anybody's ever had a horse is what I'm getting at. You, you put the bit in its mouth first and then you pull the whole bridle over their head. But it's truly the bit that they have to clamp down on that if you have uh, reins as you're sitting on top of them, you gently pull to the left. Now a trained horse will go to the left when you pull to the left because the bit it will t pull its head to the left and so therefore it'll go in that direction. And if you haven't had a horse, uh, you're, this is probably great teaching. If you do have a horse, you're like, can we get back to the Bible study? So if you pull on the right, same thing, you know, it would, that's how you steer the horse by pulling left or right. But first, the hardest part is getting that bit settled in its mouth because Trigger be trying to reject it and, and Trigger could go any way, she, any way she wants. No way you'd be pulling left or right. She'd be running you trying to knock you into trees and stuff. It's true. <laughs> so anyway, so let's go to four. Move past this. We'll be here all day. Behold, also the ships which thought they'd be so great. Okay, here's another story. I was on an aircraft carrier, and it had two shafts that ran down the length of the ship was four football fields long. And these shafts would turn simultaneously, and at the end, they had the, it had a rudder, and it, and it had propellers. And this little tiny rudder with, with, with turn to the left or right uh, would cause the whole aircraft carrier to turn left or right four football fields long with just one small rudder and it was truly amazing now it took our aircraft carrier a quarter mile just to make a left turn but it did its job so he's talking about the ships behold also the ships which they be so great and are driven of fierce winds Yet they are turned, now I don't think they have propellers and all then if they're run by wind, he, they had sails. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm whatsoever the governor listed, the governor being a part of the ship, you know. And so, so and he's giving you examples of how powerful the tongue is. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts its great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can lit. My, my pastor used to say, you know, as Christians, we're going to constantly be either putting a fire out or starting a fire. In other words, I could come to you and I could, you know, we got to get on fire for God. And then other people would be going around with rumors in their mouth. And he called that starting fire, talking bad about people behind their back and spreading this gossip. And it just grew like a virus throughout the whole neighborhood and church. Well, that's what he's talking about. You know, you could do good with your tongue or bad with your tongue. So you got to guard your mouth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. Okay, that don't sound good. Let's go uh, verify this. Oh, I have a note on here in uh, May of 2008. Oh, that's... Yeah, on verse 13. That's interesting. May 08. So, it says, meant at verse uh, verse 6. And it's highlighted too. This is called, the, the, the title of this chapter is called Live a Life of Goodness. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of wickedness and poisons every part of the body and the tongue is set on fire by hell itself and can turn our whole lives into a blazing flame of destruction and disaster is that not true verse 7 says men have trained or can train every kind of animal or bird that lives and read along there in verse 7 and every kind of reptile and fish verse 8 but no human being can tame the tongue it is always ready to pour out its deadly poison Verse 9, sometimes it praises our Heavenly Father and sometimes it breaks out into curses against men who are made like God. Verse, let's go down to verse 10 now. Thank you, Jesus. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. How can we as Christians have a mouth speak blessings or curses out of the same 
they roll off the same tongue. Well, he's saying this shouldn't be like that. So, the, you know, I read this book once. It's called The Battlefields in the Mind and uh, Guard Your Tongue. It was p very powerful to learn uh, the power behind the words you speak. So does a, does a fountain send forth at the same place water and sweet water and bitter? 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? He's just giving these analogies about your tongue. 13. Who is a wise man or woman and endued with knowledge among you? Okay, so if, if, you're, if you're claiming to have the knowledge and wisdom of God in you, then you should show out a, a good conversation as works with meekness of wisdom. So humbly, wisdom and God's knowledge should come out in every conversation you get in, not gossiping and backbiting, and because that leads to hell, it says. But if you have not bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. We talked yesterday about a worldly wisdom that led to the path that created sin, and sin led to uh, death and then hell. So let me read 13 through 15 here. This is actually 13 is where I, I had highlighted and I put Paul 5, 2008. If you are wise, live a life of steady goodness so that only good deeds will pour forth. And if you don't brag about them, then you will be truly wise. And by all means, don't brag about being wise and good if you are bitter and jealous and selfish. Wow. That is the worst sort of lie. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and inspired by the devil. Please let this word sink into your heart. For wherever there is jealousy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder and every kind of evil. 17. Are we learning anything today besides how to laugh? Let's, let's put this in our heart in closing. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. So it, the pure word of God comes forth into your heart as wisdom, and it's producing good fruit. It's like a seed planted in your heart that will always bear good fruit. Uh, peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated. It, this is how we James is saying this is how we're to live. You know, loving one another. It, it all comes back to love. So you receive these peaceable words of knowledge uh, and they're full of mercy and good fruit without partiality. In other words, not one way to this person and one way to that person. And without hypocrisy. In other words, don't be a hypocrite. Don't say all these things you're going to do and then not do them or don't tell someone else you know, you're doing all these things and in and, 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 and reality, you're, you're also doing them. That's a hypocrite. And the fruit and the fruit of righteousness. So righteousness produces a fruit because it's a seed planted in you is sown in peace of them that make peace. Shalom. God bless you. Let the word of God go forth.